This is Raymond Abbas, also known by his Instagram handle Hush Puppy. He's a Nigerian real estate tycoon, a multi-millionaire, and a popular influencer with over 2.7 million Instagram followers. In every sense of the word, Hush Puppy was a baller. His Instagram is filled with pics with him in cars, like a $300,000 Rolls Royce and a $200,000 Ferrari. When he flies, on a private jet by the way, or a PJ for those unacquainted, he warms himself up with Louis Vuitton blankets. In his home, a penthouse suite in a crazy expensive building in Dubai. Hush Puppy wasn't always rich, but he had built himself up to becoming one of the biggest businessmen and influencers in Nigeria. It was the classic rags the richest story. Everyone who knew him wanted to be like him. There was literally no limit to his money, and he made sure that everyone online knew that. There was only one problem. Everything anyone knew about Hush Puppy was a lie. A lie that would cost him all his money, cars, and designer clothes. A lie that left him right back to where he started as a poor kid from Nigeria. But to understand how Hush Puppy ended up losing it all, we have to travel back in time to when he was just a boy growing up on the streets of Lagos, Nigeria. This is the story of Raymond Abbas, also known as Hush Puppy, and how one Instagram post helped the FBI catch one of the biggest online scammers in history, a true Nigerian prince. Public is a social investing app where you can easily invest in stocks, ETFs, and crypto with any amount of money, and millions of people are already taking advantage of it. Public is a serious game changer because you can follow other investors right in the app to learn what they invest in. This gives you an unheard of advantage, never before seen in investing. Now you don't have to just listen to what people say and take their word for it, but you get to see where people actually put their money. Because as they say, actions speak much louder than words. I'm also on public, you can follow me at Jake Tran. And what's great is that the public app is free and there are no commissions on standard stock trades. Public always puts its investors first. They'll never sell your trades to market makers, and instead your trades are routed directly to the exchanges. And with Public, you can buy small slices of a stock, ETF, or crypto instead of the full share. There are thousands of stocks and ETFs to choose from, and over 20 different cryptos like Bitcoin, Cardano, and Ethereum. And if you go to public.com slash jaketrend and create an account, you'll get a free stock worth anywhere from $3 to $1,000. That's public.com slash jaketrend to get a free stock with the link below. Thanks to Public for sponsoring this video. If you came across Hush Puppy any time in the last decade, you would have never imagined he grew up poor, because he was flashy to the max. Raymond was so poor that his father worked as a taxi driver in Lagos, Nigeria, and his mom sold bread on the side of the road just to make ends meet. When Raymond was old enough, he started washing cars to try to make a couple cents on the side. To the world, Raymond Abbas wasn't millionaire material, and he knew it. But around the same time Raymond reached his 20s, Nigeria was in the middle of his first major international exports, internet scammers. It started off from small internet cafes around Lagos. These kids would take a chance and make up some Nigerian prince story to try to scam their way to an extra couple bucks. Even if they were caught, it wasn't like rich Americans were going to launch an international investigation over $1,000. For the first international scam artist called Yahoo's, $1,000 was a massive score, all from the comfort of their computer. Internationally, it was a small-time hustle at best, a hustle no one really paid any attention to. No one except for a few yahoos who recognized their potential to make even more money than any kid from Nigeria could ever dream of. And one of them was none other than Raymond Abbas. Officially, Raymond Abbas made his millions through hard work and clever investments. Whenever anyone asked him how he got started, the answer would always be real estate. Good enough to be believable, boring enough for people not to ask any follow-up questions. No one cared to ask how he got into real estate, how he made his first money to invest, or why he didn't seem to do any actual work at all. In a time when guys like Donald Trump built a billion dollar empire on real estate, people just took his answer at face value and left it at that. But the truth of Raymond Abbas's millions was actually a lot more colorful than the world believed. After spending years perfecting his online scam trade, Raymond decided Nigeria was a little too small for his dreams and made the move to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. According to everyone who knew Raymond, he was heading to Malaysia to study. But the truth? He was looking for bigger and better opportunities outside of his home country. Around that same time, the Instagram persona Hush Puppy was born. At first, it was just an unknown Instagram handle, but soon Hush Puppy would have thousands of followers. 
Like his backstory, early Hush Puppy posts were pictures of Raymond in a small apartment or out in the streets of Malaysia. Nothing flashy. But the more money he made from his side hustle, the more he started wanting to flex his wealth online. Raymond had always loved designer brands and clothes. Now with all this money from his online businesses, he finally had the chance to buy the stuff he could only dream of as a kid. But just buying it wasn't enough either. Not when he had experienced years of people telling him he would amount to nothing. Oh no, it was time to show off what his hard work had earned him. It was time to stick it to the haters. At Hush Puppy started innocently enough, just a way for Raymond Abbas to get all the validation he always wanted. Little did he know that that same Instagram account would land him in prison just a few years later. The Billionaire Gucci Master. That's where Raymond started calling himself. Every day, he would post pics of him wearing thousands of dollars worth of designer clothes, standing in front of insanely expensive cars, and staying at only the best hotels around the world. And unlike other influencers, he wasn't just using the clothes and cars as props. He actually owned them. His suite at the Palazzo Versace in Dubai? It cost him hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. His $150,000 diamond-encrusted watch? It wasn't on loan. He actually owned it. Hush Puppy had made it in every sense of the word. He wasn't just an Instagram influencer anymore. He was slowly clawing his way into the ranks of the ultra-wealthy. And his favorite story? Telling the world how he was once denied a French visa when he tried to leave Nigeria. Now he was staying in the Ritz Hotel in Paris on an all-expenses-paid fashion week trip from Louis Vuitton. And people ate it up. Everywhere, people were looking to Hush Puppy as the example of what happens when you hustle for your dreams. The story of Raymond Abbas working himself from rags to riches was something everyone wanted to believe. And when people want to believe something so badly, no amount of evidence would make them change their minds. Hush Puppy probably thought they would believe his story forever. To others, Hush Puppy was just another flexor on Instagram with more money than he knew what to do with. But Hush Puppy loved the attention. He loved the fact that people treated him like royalty. He loved his peasant followers. Yes, he actually called them peasants, who hung on to every word of his cliche captions. On the surface, he was just another filthy rich entrepreneur, and the people who didn't hate him wanted to be him. But out of all his haters and fans, there was one group Hush Puppy didn't really want watching him, the FBI. You see, for years, the FBI had been keeping track of a group of online scammers who had stolen millions of dollars from businesses and people around the world. Their investigations had led them to a lot of Hush Puppy's friends. In fact, by 2019, two of Hush Puppy's best friends and colleagues had been arrested for fraud and money laundering. This suddenly got people asking questions about how Hush Puppy made his money. In Nigeria, people who knew Raymond Abbas as a kid started posting online, wondering how he went from washing cars to owning some of the most expensive ones in the world. Something didn't add up. Something was seriously wrong. There was no record of any real estate deals where Raymond Abbas had been involved. Was he involved in his friend's scheme somehow? Or had he made all his money from faking it long enough to become an influencer? Slowly, the pieces of the puzzle of Hush Puppy's life started falling into place. And on October 11, 2019, a Hush Puppy birthday post gave the FBI everything they needed to come after him. Hush Puppy's 37th birthday. As always, he documents everything he does on Instagram. From the party at Burberry Dubai's VIP lounge, to sushi at Nobu in Monaco, facials at Christian Dior Spa in Paris, and champagne at his favorite brand, Gucci. It was just Hush being Hush. But little did he know that the FBI was tracking his every move. And this birthday appreciation post had just given them everything they needed. You see, Hush Puppy had his real phone number connected to his Instagram and his real email. So using these posts, FBI confirmed his birthday, his identity, and his location throughout the day. How did this implicate him in a massive scam? Well, with all that tracking information, the FBI managed to link all his movements throughout the day with the movements of known conspirators in one of the biggest online scam syndicates in history. All his friends from his birthday party, they were under investigation too. And there was no way Hush Puppy wasn't also a part of their scheme.
Sunday, June 7, 2020, the final puzzle pieces fall into place, and an arrest warrant is issued for Hush Puppy and his friends. Monday morning around 1 a.m., Dubai police force their way into Hush Puppy Suites at the Palazzo Versace. At the same time, similar raids happen across the city, and 11 other suspects, all friends with Hush Puppy, are arrested. 47 cell phones, 21 laptops, $7 million worth of cars, and $40 million in cash was confiscated. Hush Puppy is extradited to America, where he pleads guilty to being a part of a syndicate that scammed American and European businesses out of almost half a billion dollars. But how in this day and age, where Nigerian internet scams are so well known, did a group of guys manage to scam people out of $450 million? How did anyone with that kind of money believe their stories? And how did the FBI finally figure out who it was? Well, it turns out, Hush Puppy's scheme was a lot simpler than you think. Hush and his team ran what the FBI calls a BEC scam, or a Business Email Compromise Scheme. Here's how it works. Hush and his team would send out phishing emails to a company staff, a staff member falls for it and shares some vital company info, then the team takes that information and uses it to access the company's official email accounts. Once they do this, they start monitoring every email sent and received by that account, waiting for it to send an invoice. Let's say company A is charging a client $1 million to refinance a property loan. As soon as the company sends the invoice, Hush's team gets to work making an exact copy of it. The only thing they change is the bank account number. Now the team creates an email account, almost exactly like the one that usually sends the client's invoices. Maybe the real company email address is this? So Hush's team adds or removes a letter from it like this. It may seem obvious now as I show you, but when you're accepting an invoice from an email that looks sorta of like this, and you get that invoice at the time you're expecting to get it, it's super easy to miss. This exact scam actually happened to someone very close to me. So the client gets an email from Kelsey, apologizing for a mistake on the first invoice, and instructing them to follow the instructions on this new error-free invoice. The client just thinks, phew, that was close, and deposits the money into the new account. The account controlled by Hush Puppy himself. With the money safely in Hush's eager hands, the email account is deleted, and every trace of the scammers disappears into thin air. And the money? It gets laundered to distance itself from the original transaction, and then some of it gets divided up and sent to members of the team, while most of it stays with Hush. Hush's role in this whole scheme was to provide the bank accounts. Over the years, him and his team stole almost half a billion dollars from almost anyone they could. A children's hospital in Qatar, a law firm in America. Anyone who was gullible enough to fall for their scheme saw their company lose millions. In most cases, no one wanted to go public with their loss. What law firm wants to advertise the fact that they got scammed out of a million dollars by some guy online? At one point, Hush and his team were even planning on scamming an English football club out of $300 million. Luckily, the plan didn't go through. And for years, the FBI had been tracking down the people responsible for one of the most successful online rackets in history. When they finally arrested Hush's two friends, one of them had his phone on him. And on that phone, they found messages to a Snapchat account called Hush Puppy asking for banking details to use on a new scam. Unfortunately for Hush Puppy, he had gotten a little too comfortable with his life as a multi-millionaire scam artist. He connected all his social media to his phone number and email, and using that, the FBI had finally been able to start looking in the right direction. The birthday party was just the cherry on top. Here they had Hush Puppy partying with confirmed internet scammers. It was all they needed to arrest him and send him to prison for a very, very long time. If there's one lesson we can learn from this, is that if you make your money in a sketchy manner, which I'm not advising you to do, learn a little something from our man Hush and keep your flexing to your close friends list. What's up guys? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Super cool story that I want to share with you guys. And if you're new here, my name is Jake and we make documentaries on money, power, and crime multiple times a week for free. So if you enjoyed this one, click that subscribe button below. And if you want longer, more controversial documentaries that are too controversial to be posted publicly, click that join button below. I'm actually working on one right now. I know it's a little bit delayed, but it's definitely going to get demonetized. So it'll be good. And if you join and you don't think it's worth it, there's a refund policy. So you can just email me and I will personally refund you the money. That's going to wrap it up. You can follow me on Instagram at jaketrend.io. Stay dangerous out there and I'll see you guys in the next one.